Welcome back. In this video, we'll learn how to write code instead of use effect that will send a request to an API or send data off to a database, some sort of HTTP request going on instead of use effect. And we'll also learn how to manage use effect and tell it when it should actually run because we probably don't want to be requesting data from an API every single re-render. So we're going to start uh, by just taking a look at the API. It's maybe not the most exciting one for some of you, the Star Wars API. I'm actually not, oh, I feel bad it's admitting this. I'm not a big Star Wars fan personally. I do love sci-fi, but I just, I don't know, never got into Star Wars. So it's an open source API. It's a great API, um, lots of information. We are going to be requesting the endpoints for the movies. So I think it's called films. So it is HTTPS swappy.co slash API slash films slash one. And that gives us the first film. Film slash two gives us the second film. I guess Empire Strikes Back. The order of Star Wars movies always confused me as a kid. And I think it only goes up to the original seven. Is there an eighth that they put in here? No. So only the original seven movies. So what we're going to do is make a very simple application where we have a drop-down menu. A user can select from one of those seven options. And then once they select, we will send a request to the relevant endpoint, get the information back and display the title, maybe the opening crawl, some text. So let's begin over here. I have a new relatively empty component. I've imported use state and use effect and I've exported it. I'm calling it SW Movies. It's not a very good name for a component. I'm gonna begin by adding in a select. So a drop down menu. And then inside of here, we'll add a couple of options. So the first one will have a value of one and it will display one. So I'm gonna duplicate this. We could also do this programmatically where we had an array going up to seven and then we loop over that and make an option for each item in the array. But just to keep it simple and keep you focused on the new stuff, I'm just gonna do this the old fashioned way. So I'll update this quickly. Okay, so I now have all of my options and let's just make sure I'm rendering one of these. So Star Wars movies from SW movies. I'm gonna comment the clicker out and just add in SW movies. Okay, it works, we have our seven options. So what we need to do now is control this input. So whenever we change this value, whatever we change it to, we wanna have a piece of state that knows about that. So we need to make a piece of state. We're using hooks in a functional component, so that means use state. So we can call the piece of state ID or number. Number is fine. So we'll do const. Remember it's an array with two items, number and then a function to set that piece of state to set number equals use state and we'll have it default at the first movie id of one then on this select we'll give it a value of number which is coming from use state and an on change so whenever it changes we need to set number to be whichever option was chosen event.target.value so that looks like this if we use an inline arrow function we want to do set number to be e dot target dot value and to make sure it works let's just add um about like an h4 down here that says you choose or chose and then we'll display number is it working you chose one you chose four six seven okay so we have this piece of state updating now what we want to do is whenever that changes whenever you pick a new number we want to send a request off to the Star Wars API. So we're going to use use effect, which I've already imported. So use effect, and then write our function in here. I'm going to use Axios to make my API, API call. So I'm going to import Axios from Axios. I've already installed it, by the way. Uh, I talked about how to do that earlier. I mean, it's there's nothing to talk about. NPM install Axios, that's it. But if you're not familiar with Axios, you can watch one of my earlier videos when we talked about lifecycle methods and see how it works. So we're gonna call axios.get and I'm gonna make this an async function. And you might think I could do this, async here and then say const response equals await axios.get and then what's the URL we're going for? 
it is, let's just copy this right there, slash API, slash films. So I'm just going to replace this with backticks here so I can interpolate my value in. So slash films, slash, let me just make sure, is it plural or singular? Films. And then our number, whatever that number is from one to seven. So dollar sign number. So that should give us some data. And then let's try console.logging the response. What do we get? open up my console. And the first thing I see is an effect function must not return anything besides a function. It looks like he wrote use effect, async, or return to promise. Instead, write the async function inside your effect and call it immediately, like this. So I'm just going to copy that over so we can reference it here. We're going to rewrite things, use effect, and we write our async function inside. So async function, and we'll call it get data. Inside of that, we will await axios.get this URL. Then when it comes back, and eh, we'll just console.log again. And then we need to make sure we actually call get data inside of use effect. Okay, and I'm just gonna add this slash in. I was getting some complaints without it. Now let's see if it works. So I'm gonna refresh my page. I make the first request automatically using ID, what is that, ID of one, which is episode four. It's just why is that? That's so confusing. Uh, film slash one, episode ID four. Shouldn't make movies out of order. Come on. All right, so we change this, and we're getting new data back. So that seems like it's doing exactly what we want. It is right now. But we're going to have a small issue. First, let's focus on the information we want. Let's just grab the title. So that's inside of the response data title. So if I want to display that title, Instead of saying you chose number, let's display movie.title or something. But movie doesn't exist, so we need to make some space in the state again. So we're going to go with movie and set movie. This is the same pattern we, we use all the time when we fetch data from an API in React. We have a piece of state that we update once the data comes back, once we have a response. So let's initialize it just to be an empty string or an empty object or a null or something like that. Then once we have our response, we're going to take response.data and call set movie with it. So all we're doing here is doing the same request, getting the data back, saving response.data to movie. We're updating that piece of state and then we're displaying movie.title down here. Let's see what happens. Oh my gosh, look at all these requests. I'm gonna stop right now. I'm gonna edit this so I can not hit a uh, rate limit on that API. I just made like 50 API requests, one after another. Use effect was being called over and over and over and over. Why did that happen? All we did was suddenly update the state here. Earlier, we were console.logging the response and there was no problem. It only happened once every time we changed. Anytime that piece of state number changed, we got new data. But then for some reason, when I was updating a piece of state like movie, instead of use effect, we were just calling it over and over and over. Use effect was going crazy. Well, what's happening is that use effect runs anytime there's a re-render. And then we're getting new data inside of here. We're requesting the movie. We update the value of movie. And then that triggers a re-render because movie.title changes. Even if the title itself doesn't seem to change, it's the same string every time, use effect is going to run again because something changed in the state. It was triggered, use effect runs. We can fix this very easily by passing in a second argument here. And this argument takes a form of an array. And we can pass in to this array any number of pieces of data, any number of things in the state that if they change, use effect should run. If anything else changes, use effect should not run. So we only want use effect to run when number is updated. So we can add it in here. And this now says, if I go back and update what I had before, call set movie with response.data. We're now only going to run all of this code and get new data when number changes. So movie will be updated and that won't trigger use effect. It won't run again and again and again. So let's make sure that that works. 
Okay, so I get some new data here. Phantom Menace. The Force Awakens. Empire Strikes Back. Okay, so that's working. We're getting all of the, the data back, but it's only happening. We only made seven requests. We didn't make, I don't know, at this point, it would be like 100 requests with the other version. Uh, we can display a little bit more if you wanted to. So let's also do a paragraph here that has the movie dot, what is it called? The scrolling text. Uh, I'm not console.logging anymore. Let's do console.log response dot data. Ah, that's what I'm looking for. Opening underscore crawl. So let's fix that up and display movie.opening crawl. And then get rid of that console.log. And now we should display that text at the beginning. Perfect. It is a period of civil war, rebels. Okay, great. Go to a different movie. We get different information. I know it's hideous to look at, but what we're achieving here is something you'll do all the time if you write many applications using hooks fetching data or some sort of, it doesn't even have to be an API call or a database call, but some operation that you only want to actually happen when something updates. We don't want to run this code anytime anything at all updates in this component. Instead, we're more specific only when number changes. And if we had something else, if we had another thing that was changing, we could pass that in here, like number. And let's say we're also allowing a user to enter a year and if they entered a new year or they chose a different number, we want to make a new API call. The other thing that's cool about use effect is you can have multiple use effects. You don't have to write one massive long use effect. We can have this code run when number changes, and then we could have other code run when something else changes. All right, so that's the basics of use effect so far. It runs by default after every single render first one, last one, it doesn't matter. But we can also tell it, actually, slow down there, buddy. Only run when number changes or some other value or multiple values. We pass it in as an array, a second argument to use effect after the function itself.